Hi there, welcome to Crafty Shenanigans. I'm Shannon Smith, and after a little bit of a winter holiday break, I'm ready to just get moving on some new projects. So let's just go ahead and get going. Okay, so today I'm going to create a card using craft paper and embossing and colored pencils. I love the look of colored pencils on craft paper. So we're gonna go ahead and get started with that. I'm gonna be using this beautiful stamp by Magenta. It's actually called Rose, I believe it's Canina. Um, and this is the large one. This is gorgeous, I just love this. I've been itching to color this ever since I bought it. So we'll be using that and we're going to go ahead and use Arteza colored pencils. And I did grab a variety of those to kind of celebrate the Pantone color of the year, which is coral. So let's go ahead and get going on that. So the first thing that we are going to want to do is we are going to want to get our embossing done. So we are going to take this craft paper. This actually happens to be um, my favorite things, craft paper, but I would assume any of them would work just fine. I've got my Versamark pad and we've got our beautiful stamp. So we're gonna go ahead and get started on that embossing. I want to use an anti-static anti little, I don't know what you call these, but it's like, a, I wanna say embossing buddy or something like that. I've had this for like a decade. I don't even remember where I got it, but it just, um, you can buy them anywhere. Any local scrapbook store should have them or a hobby store. But anyway, this just kind of makes it so that your embossing powder doesn't stick where you don't want it to. So we'll start off there and we're gonna use our Versamark pad. And I'm going to make one of these flowers because we're going to stamp all over this um, panel. But I am going to make one of them more the star than the others. So I'm going to want to kind of put that one almost completely on our paper where the others will not have near as much on there. So the Versamark, if you're not familiar with it, kind of makes a watermark look and the embossing powder will stick to that. But it actually can be kind of cool if you want to just have a watermark. We're just gonna turn it a little bit. We wanna get the best coverage that we can without having it all be too similar. Okay, and we have just a couple more. And as long as we work fairly quick, we should be fine with our embossing powder still sticking. And just watch your stamp for cues of where to fit it. good stamp on there. Let's see. Go do that. And maybe even one more little tiny partial. Okay. So we've got some good coverage there. I just like to use a piece of paper. I fold it in half. It just makes it easier to get it back in the jar for me. And I'm just using white embossing powder. This one happens to be Fun Stamper's Journey. You want to flick it a little bit without getting all of your powder off. But I also, I will use a little bit of my, just make sure it's not going to get any color on there. But these little blending stumps work really good to get 
any excess off. I think we just about have it. I have one more little edge. But all in all, not too shabby. So now we'll go ahead and heat that up. Okay, so you're going to want to hold your heat tool a little further away than I did, probably at least six inches away. And also, if you want to see more about heat embossing, there's a link here for that video where I go into more detail. Okay, so now we are ready to color. And I'm going to start out with a little bit of yellow. And I'm just going to color really lightly and loosely through the center a little bit. And I'm not really pushing very hard. And if you want a little bit more tutorial on using colored pencils, I actually have a different video that would probably be a better place to start for that. But for now, I'll just tell you, um, I'll probably work from my lightest colors out to my darkest. And I will likely have this part of the video sped up so that you're not bored to tears. So go ahead, like I said, there'll be a link you can see on the screen for um, the coloring video. Okay, so first I'm just laying down one uh, base layer of color. And this makes it easier for me to be able to blend all of my other colors in. So you can see it's, it's my lightest color and I'm going to gradually work into another layer of the same color until I kind of have that where I want it. And then I'll go ahead and start adding the darker colors. I like to use the colored pencil to do as much of the blending as I can. And I use circular motions so that I don't get any harsh lines. Also, um, I may go back through and use a lighter color to blend a darker color into a lighter color, if that makes sense. And then if I, I get it as smooth as I can with the colored pencils, and then I'll come in with my blending stump and take out any remaining lines. You can see I've still got that darker color working in, just giving a little more definition to the edges of the petals. and just keep layering the colors. You can always add more, so don't push too hard. Just go ahead and add another layer. Okay, so now that we've got all of that colored, you can see our beautiful coral color going on there. And so now we're just going to add a little bit of interest with, this is called Silk. This is a Fun Stampers Journey product, and it actually is just gonna you apply it just, well, I'll just show you when I do it. But anyway, we're just gonna add a little interest here. It's very messy, so I do use my little dish pan. And I'm going to take this piece of paper just to kind of mask off my flower. You can see all the little specks, that's the effect we're going to be doing. So you can see it kind of looks like nail polish and you just flick it. It's pretty simple to use. One more little one. One of the nice things about silk is that it does dry pretty quickly. I don't want to move that mask until I'm pretty sure it's pretty dry. Okay, so you can see we got just where we wanted to. And now I will just show you what I did for the rest of it. So I went ahead and I cut out my sentiment on my Cricut. It's from the Lacey Labels cartridge. So if you're looking for that, you can find it that way. And then I just went ahead and I added a few of these little jewels and I went ahead and, there's our sentiment. I just matted that on black cardstock and then I just went ahead and used the white card base. So you can see, pretty simple. 
once you get the coloring done and that that really is where the trick is in the embossing so just kind of a fun quick and easy card today not super quick with the coloring like I said but fairly straightforward anyway Okay, well, I hope that you learned something new or maybe got a new fresh idea for something that you want to try out. I am excited about the coral. I think we'll see it everywhere we go this year. And thank you so much for joining me today. And thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate all of the subscribes and the likes and the shares. And I would ask you to continue to do that. And I have some really fun things coming up this month. I'm really excited about them. And so look forward to some surprises next week. So happy 2019 and I'm looking forward to all of the fun, new, exciting things that we'll be doing this year. I will see you next time.